I think the kind of utopian uh, vision that we're driving towards is the idea of, of data itself as being the new API. So kind of taking even programming languages out of the equation and to have a standard way of representing data and moving data between, between systems and between uh, storage systems and processing frameworks. So it turns out that solving this, solving this problem is hard. And about uh, five years ago, there was a serendipitous collection of open source developers who had all respectively arrived at similar conclusions around this problem. And we decided to team up and form an open source project, which uh, we, we called Arrow and was uh, formally started at the beginning of 2016. So we've been doing development for um, about four and a half years. And if you look at the people who are involved in the project, it's an interesting intersection of people like me who come from more um, the data science world, languages like Python and R, and people who are from the, um, the database community, so people who are building uh, large-scale distributed systems for big data processing and more traditional SQL-based SQL -based workloads. And in the past, you saw very little collaboration between people in the database community and the data science ecosystem. And so there's you see a lot of sophisticated uh, analytical technology and database systems. And I'm really excited about bringing some of the, um, the technical expertise from the, from the database world to the data frame libraries that, that millions of data scientists use every day. And so our mission in the project is to develop language-independent uh, standards and um, standard libraries to accelerate uh, in-memory computing, and in particular, the you know, in-memory analytics that you find in database systems and, and data frame libraries. And so for me, so there are a few goals that I personally have in being involved in this project. So I would like to see uh, overall interoperability improve between the data science ecosystem um, and other kinds of data systems, whether those are databases or big data systems like Apache Spark. Um, you know, I'm sure there are you know, new systems will appear in the future. And I would like the interoperability story to be um, you know, uh, to be more obvious to people. So rather than uh, interoperability being an afterthought that people think about it from the get-go and choose, um, choose a technology like Arrow to improve, uh, improve the interface uh, between the system that they're building in the outside world. Um, I would also like to see data frame libraries uh, utilize standard data structures rather than designing their own. And so that permits um, the reuse of algorithms and the reuse of things like CSV readers. And so rather than, so rather than have everyone re-implementing not only a new programming interface and API and all of the algorithms to implement it, that you would see people focusing more on user experience, the developer experience of using these tools rather than having, uh, you know, spreading themselves thin uh, amongst all of these problems. And in doing so, by promoting collaboration in, across a uh, you know, much larger community of developers, we can unify efforts on improving performance, um, maximizing how we are utilizing um, our hardware, um, and in general, making all of our code uh, faster and ourselves as developers more, more productive. So kind of the, the world, um, you know, kind of the world that we're, that we're working towards, kind of the old world where you see this uh, kind of end choose to combinatorial problem of building, uh, having to build custom data converters between uh, each point A and point B, that it may not be that uh, a given system is arrow native internally, but at least there is a, uh, a standard medium for um, connecting systems together that is, that is high performance. So in building this project, I think it's, it's, uh, it's important to note that, that uh, it's not just about having any standardized data structures. We also want um, the, the standard data structures to be ones that are favorable from a computational perspective. And so in building, in building Pandas and what I've observed in other data frame projects, that there's kind of recurrent issues um, around um, you know, what kinds of data types we can support, uh, efficiency issues in processing the data. In particular, um, we see a lot of issues with high memory consumption and poor processing performance with non-numeric data. So, so often things work really well when you're dealing with floating point numbers, but when you have very string heavy data set that data sets, then things uh, sometimes break down. We see a lot of problems with data sets that do not fit into memory. And so the data structures um, you know, need to be designed for the kind of memory mapped uh, out of core uh, paradigm of interacting with uh, very large data sets that, um, that may not fit into the, the random access memory on your computer. So what we've done in the project, uh, so our initial um, sort of major effort was to design um, a tabular data format that is not specific to a particular programming language, that's column oriented, that could be used as um, the runtime data format for data frame projects as well as um, analytical database systems. Uh, we created a um, binary messaging protocol which can be used for inter-process communication, shared memory, can be also used for network communication, sending data over the wire. Um, we you know, later designed a remote procedure call framework for building data services that are arrow native, and I will say a few words about that later. Um, but a lot of what's taken up our time is creating a software development platform in many programming languages that you know, we think of as a, being a, a batteries included uh, development platform that, that simplifies creating arrow native uh, data processing applications. That's why I've been spending most of my time on the last, the last four and a half years. Um, project is doing, is doing really well. We've made uh, 17 major releases. We're about to, uh, to make our 1.0 release. Um, I'll explain what that means here, here in a second. We just crossed uh, over 500 unique uh, individuals that have contributed to the project. And you can see uh, in this graph the uh, trajectory of unique contributors. So um, it's uh, you know, started out a bit slow, but as the project um, has seen more adoption, it's had a snowballing effect in attracting um, more, more contributors, more developers to the project um, as they you know, need to build features that, that they need to use Arrow in their applications. And at this time, there are 11 different programming languages that are represented uh, in, the, in the code base. The developer, um, some of you may be familiar with the Apache Software Foundation, the developer um, base. Uh, we started out with around 20 people involved in the project, and we've added over, you know, over 20 new committers to the project and many um, voting um, committee members. And so we, we also see the governance of the project expanding as more um, people um, are regular and kind of active contributors and partic participating in the governance of the project. 
Uh, we're about to make a 1.0 release, which will bring um, formal uh, protocol stability. Um, I think it's our 18th release, and there's some rough edges that we've been uh, standing over and figuring out some of the uh, forward and backward compatibil compatibility guarantees that we want to offer, so that we can have uh, a stable format that can be depended on, um, you know, for you know, for for many years without um, creating risk about applications upgrading and uh, having either forward or backward compatibility problems for older applications, which maybe maybe are stuck on an old an old version of the libraries. So some, some of you might be wondering, well, what does this have to do with, with data frame projects and libraries like Pandas and the, um, you know, the tools that I'm familiar with? And so it's my hypothesis that um, the more systems offer a, um, the ability to import and export um, data as arrow format, um, that processing frameworks will prefer to process the arrow format in place rather than loading it into memory and then converting it to some other, uh, some other data structure. And so in doing that, they, they remove serialization overhead from their application and become both more memory and, and processing uh, efficient. And so I believe that the future of data frame libraries is that they will increasingly be more and more um, arrow native. And as new projects are created in the future, that they will choose to be, um, that they will choose to be arrow native in their data representation and in their, um, their implementation from, from day one rather than designing custom, custom data structures. <laughs> 